What is going on, randomizers? I'm Sinjin, and today, welcome back to another episode of a not-so-random, yet also super-random podcast by Sinjin, a.k.a. Firecracken. And today, I am not alone. I have... Ace. Your imaginary friend. <laughs> I have Ace with me, and our topic today is Doctor Who. Now, we have two books about this series with us, so if we, like can't think of anything to talk about, we can look to the books and talk about something from that. Yes, and I'm really hoping that this podcast, this episode, we can get it as long as the last one. The last one with Marshall was long, and we had, like, a real plot of... We had, like, a real lot of... A big drive. Knowing on the topic and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, let's get straight into it. Doctor Who. So, let's just... We want to start off with talking about our ex- our exper- past experiences of Doctor Who. I have watched every, maybe not every single episode, but I have watched a lot of episodes of Doctor Who. The 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th Doctor, I've watched probably almost all of their episodes. And, you know, I've also watched some extra content, you know, like Doctor Mysterio, and um, my friend knows a lot about it, and we talk about it all the time. I have some Sonic screwdrivers. I have some pops and I have yeah, and I've read I read both of these books. One's about aliens. One's about companions. And so I have just read the the two books. I have I've read this one too. He doesn't know that I read it in a friend's house. But um, I have not seen the show or the movies or anything about it. I just know everything I know because of the books, and that's not much. But. Like, the Companion's Companion, I liked it. I preferred the Monsters guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a lot more interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. like women. That's rude. Since <laughs> it's not all of his companions are women. I know, but still. But, like, I don't like... I don't find this very interesting. Yeah, that, that, that book, the book itself, um, the Companion's Companion, it is, like, helpful if you wanted to, like, learn something. But just reading it, like, to read it, it's really not that interesting. Yeah. Like, the creature god, you find out, like, a lot of facts that you do not know. And the know, pictures so are really, really good, but if you're just looking at, like, people, like, you see that all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, are you a brave adventurer? No, not really. <laughs> so, let's just get this started with going all the way back to the first Doctor. I don't know much about that at all. So, the show Doctor Who, if you don't know, is a show about a character called the Doctor, who travels along with his com- with his companions... And he travels through time and through space and all that stuff. And there's a bunch of different creatures. For example, the Daleks and the Cybermen and, like, the Minotaur and just different other stuff like that. Clockwork Robots he encounters a good bit. Daleks all the time and stuff like that. So the, the show first aired in 1963 with the first Doctor. It was in black and white. It was in black and white. I'm not sure what... The Until do- they what got was, Technicolor. What it was called. What that episode was called. But yeah, it was a really good show. I mean, like like last episode, I didn't do a lot of research. So I'm just going to say that it was probably really popular. And so it, um, it built up. And then eventually, I think halfway through the second Doctor was when they <coughs> got in color. I may be incorrect on that. I know they had color for the third Doctor. Um, so, yeah, and then you have the first Doctor, he, um, is, like, he's, he's older, like, what's funny, he's the youngest Doctor, but he's one of the oldest actors, you know. Yeah. So he's, he's older, white hair, you know, Sonic, they all have a Sonic True Driver, and the only, he probably has some special stuff about him in the show, but really the, probably the most special thing about him is that he was the one who introduced Doctor Who. Then, the Doctor, whenever he dies... What is talk? So whenever the Doctor dies, he regenerates. Now, the doc- Doctor's... He's a, he's a Time Lord. So whenever a Time Lord dies, they regenerate. Now, Time Lords only have a certain amount of regenerations, which, you know, kind of sad, but whatever. And then... So... Th- The first one was just the first Doctor. Then he regenerated again to the second Doctor. The second Doctor is the second Doctor. 
And then the regenerations kept going. Third doctor, fourth doctor, fifth doctor, sixth doctor, seventh doctor, all the way to the twelfth doctor. Thirteenth doctor, actually. Thirteenth. And did, then he died? No. The thirteenth one is still ha- is happening now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I started watching on the ninth yeah, doctor. Yeah, as you can see, I'm not the greatest. <laughs> yeah. I started watching on the ninth doctor, Christopher Eccleston, and... I fell in love with the show. And the first ever episode that I watched that I watched Doctor Who was the one where the first episode of the Ninth Doctor where he first meet first meets Rose with the Autons, the mannequins, the moving mannequins. I watched that episode and I was like, hmm, this looks like a good series. So I have watched Chris Frackleston, David Tennant, Matt Smith, and Peter Capaldi. My favorite doctor, the tenth one, David Tennant. Not only because was David Tennant also in Harry Potter, because that that season was just really, really, really entertaining, and you know, just stuff like that. And if you hear a sound like that, that's somebody FaceTiming me. I should probably put my tape on silent. We should say no, not today. Yeah. So, what else? Like, what about Doctor Who? So maybe let's just go in. Let's go into like what our favorite creature is. Um. Yeah. Let's just talk about the creatures. Creatures are the funnest part, in my opinion. Yeah. I like... The peg dolls, in my opinion, are the creepiest. Peg dolls are very creepy. But the, um... The gang... But the... Gangers? Gangers. Gangers. I don't know. How do you say it? They are... I don't really know. They are really... Really... Weird. Yeah. One thing that's the scariest, in my opinion... Not the creepiest. The scariest is the fog shark. Like... Sharks... Sharks are... Sharks... Sharks are scary enough in the water... But when they can, like, when they have of the ability to hunt you on land, that brings the fear to a whole new level. <coughs> Daleks are like the, in my opinion, this may not be for all Doctor Who fans, but the Daleks are like the stereotypical Doctor Who villain. Yeah, the Daleks and the Cybermen are the two oldest Doctor Who villains. Now, if you don't know what a Dalek is... We'll um, describe him to you. It's, okay, I'll, as the Doctor has it in written... Nasty, bubbling lumps of hate inside an armored life support system. Nothing's like, almost impossible to stop. They just want to exterminate everyone, which frankly suggests to me that they have what humans call an attitude problem. Think of your worst nightmare. Your very worst ever. Daleks are even worse. Wow. So they have... My very worst nightmare is waking up and not being able to eat breakfast. Oh, wow. (laughs) So, you know, they have like a... They have an armored body with like some little, um... What are those called? Like, half spheres? Yeah. Oh, like semicircles. Semicircles, yeah. Like semi spheres, half spheres, whatever you want to call them. Just like all over. It's like if you cut the earth in half. Yeah, and then it has a gun, which is like, it looks like it has two arms, but really it's just a gun and a plunger. So the gun. Does it plunge toilets for like on the side? <laughs> no, I think it that used, was just like, a joke. attaches them and like kills them and stuff with it. It was a joke. <laughs> so it has a. The gun and like shoots you and like electrocutes you and stuff, and then it has the um the eye stalk, which is what it sees out of, and that and that is the Dalek's weak point. So that's where you want to aim if you're going to try it. Then it has two bulbs, which would look like where like the ears would probably be, and those those light up whenever a Dalek speaks. So inside a Dalek shell, you see what is a little. I don't know, like it's a, like a, a little a octopus, op- but like you can see its brain. A, psych- a cycloptic octop- octopus, and you can it's see an its brain with one eye, and then you can see its brain and it's just a little slimy, little nasty thing, and that's what controls the Daleks. So you know that's, and then there's a bunch of different the Emperor Dalek, Cult of Scaro, Human Dalek. The pig slaves are really funny in my opinion. Yeah. So Dalekized humans. Special weapons, Davros. Dog Let's talk about the fog shark for a minute. Okay. Fog shark. I'll read it. <clears throat> There's a planet called Ember where the fog gets so thick that fish can swim in it. No, really. Fish. Little fish, not a problem. But some are quite big and scary with teeth. Like sharks. Well, not just like sharks. Actually sharks swimming through air. So, they're basically just normal sharks in the air. And that's terrifying. Yeah, teeth, less teeth, a shark. 
If there's a fish warning, stay indoors, or if a flying shark comes, try singing. I'm serious, singing. Sounds stupid, but it might work. So long as you're Did not you, tone uh, deaf with the rubber. Mention that he's. I'm mentioning that he's reading so that he doesn't sound kind of odd. Yeah, I'm reading. Their speed is eight, and their dangerous rating is eight, and they're pretty big. Which you know, that's... they're probably the size of around the biggest shark here mm-hmm. on Earth. Yeah, clockwork robots. Another, oh my God! There's another. I hate clockwork robots. Another classic Doctor Who villain. Clockwork robots. It's a good idea. Have your repair robots run on clockwork, and if your spaceship's power fails, the robots can still repair it. The problem starts when the robots decide to use parts of the crew to repair the systems. The half faced so, yeah. man is really creepy. Yeah. So, clockwork robots try to hide by breaking your clock. So, if you've got a broken clock, but you can still hear it ticking, you might be in trouble. Multi grain anti oil can cause them to seize up, so keep some handy. Now, their speed is 5 and their dangerous rating is 7, which is, so that's on a 0 to 10 scale, which, you know, pretty powerful and all that. So, yeah. <laughs> now, there's some other clockwork people. Um, the teller is actually, like, the most terrifying thing ever. Yeah, the teller. The teller was used by the Bank of... How about Tar- you just summarize it instead of reading? Straight? Yeah. So, um, it's, uh, basically a bodyguard, not really a bodyguard, it's a prisoner, it's a weird alien prisoner, that they used in a bank, the bank of Carabraxis, and anybody who had criminal intent, like, breaking into the bank, it could, like, see that, see that, because it has, like, weird eyes and stuff, it could read their minds, and then if they had criminal intent, it would melt their brain. That is the worst thing that ever happened to you. Now, their their speed is four, because they're all locked up and stuff. But they also have a seven dangerous rating. Which is... like, if they don't like you, they could just probably kill you. No. It's only if they're... It is a prisoner, so you know. But... The ood. Oh. But the people can't control, like, what they think, right? Mm, I don't know. Oods. It's this little... Kind of looks like... The it's head... Like Squidward. Yeah. It head. looks like Davy Jones, but like bald and without a hat. No, the head kind of looks like um, a Dalek, the inside of a Dalek. And, you know, they're really not harmless unless they have red eyes, which means they have a, like, a, so I forget really, but it's like a disease. And then they have this little translation orb that they carry and it's like going but into. The, it was, it, before it was a translation orb. Like, the, some someone, I forgot who it was, but they changed it to a translation orb. Yeah, they were just carrying their brains around. And then they put the orb around it, and it would translate and stuff. But they were just carrying their brains around. It's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're usually safe with an ood. It'll bring you tea and stuff, and <laughs> if its eyes go red or green... Yeah, their eyes are normally white. So if the eyes go red or green, that's a sure sign of trouble. Either it's gone mad or it's possessed by something. I reckon, you know, you use the te- jam the telepathic transmissions or make a swift exit. Their speed is six. They have a five dangerous rating. Let's see, where are these Cybermen? Cyberman, Cyberman. That's whatever a Cyberman does. Here we go, Cyberman. Survival, the basic instinct of any race. The Cybermen took it to the extreme. They replaced their bodies with metal and plastic, becoming machines. And then as if it wasn't enough, they messed with their brains too, removing all emotion and feeling. They thought it was an improvement. It wasn't. They have rods connect directly to the brain, um, or what's left of it. Then they have, it's a complete metal suit. And then they, they delete people. They have like a, a ray gun and stuff. Speed 7, dangerous rating 9. So this, these are even worse than a Dalek, which is crazy. So I would, like, you don't want to get into a fight with Cybermen, because they probably win. And you have Cyber Controller, which is kind of like a more powerful Dalek, and it like controls them and stuff. And you have the Cyber Shades, which is just bears. 
that were taken over by Cybermen. And you have the Cyber King, which is kind of like the Emperor Dalek, but with Cybermen. Then you have the C Cybermen did a lot of things. Then you have Cybermats. It's like a little medic, little metal cybernetic rodents. They probably were rodents once. They're programmed to perform simple tasks, and they can articulate about in places where a Cyberman might be noticed or won't fit. So you know, pretty good. Not pretty good, but bad. Then you have cyber mites, which are cyber mats only a lot smaller. So it's kind of like probably if you turned a caterpillar into a Cyberman kind of thing. That's what a cyber mite is. Then you have. Other types of Cybermen. Then you have the nesting consciousness, which made, which made the Autons, which is the first ever creature that I encountered whenever I was watching Doctor Who. It's like this big bubbly lava plasma looking thing. It's most it's like molten plastic, and so it uses it. it it's a consciousness, so it puts consciousness into other plastic. It can transfer its intelligence to other plastic objects. Which is actually pretty crazy, if you think about it. So, yeah, and then it transferred itself, it transferred itself to mannequins and stores, which made it become an Auton. Which, the, the mannequins were known as Autons, which were moving, um, so, which were like moving mannequins which tried to kill you. Then you have Cassandra. Cassandra, a big, it's just skin. But it's like, like a overs. flat piece a skin. Yeah. Like stretched, stretched over a frame. And then it has his brain in a jar. Which is crazy. Cassandra is in her time that she's like living. Is she said to be the last pure human. But I mean really. Like how is that a pure human if you're she's like. She's super sassy. She's like. Mm, mm, mm. She's like no no <laughs> no. She doesn't have hands to do that. No, she doesn't have the hands to stand. And then she always has to be moisturized. Um, or she'll dry. Every, ve every very often. And her skin, it dries and shrinks and snaps. So she always has two people, two guys, two people on the sides of her pushing her and moisturizing her every, um, every minute. Um, um. The Master. So the Master is another Time Lord. Which, um, he's just an e really evil one. His goal is to defeat the Doctor, kill him. Now, the Master was once friends with the Doctor. But then something happened and blah, 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 blah. He got bored and left Gallifrey. He wanted to rule the universe. And then he's had multiple forms. And then he went on to regenerate into Missy. Which is the woman form. Missy is short for the mistress. So the mistress, mistress is, is like the opposite of master. Yeah. Mistress is the girl version. Is the right. female. So that's just him regenerated into a woman. A woman. Yeah. So it's kind of like the third. Oh, let's doctor. talk about this. The taclophane? Or the future kind. Future kind? Okay. So future kind. Okay. So, Future Kind is said to be the future of the human race. They're mutated killer cannibals living like animals on the planet Malkasaro in the far future. Um, more like regression than, regression than evolution. They have fang teeth and like face markings, like, tri like um, tribunal face markings and stuff. And they're, they're humans, just not... Really, <laughs> they're like it's like if all it's like humans, but before we were humans. Except it's in the future. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like time traveling cavemen from the future. Yeah. So the the doctor has had many companions through his travel, and the first not the first one, but with the first one with the ninth doctor was Rose Tyler. Very interesting. Rose Tyler was probably my favorite. No, I don't know. She was a very good companion. She was funny. She really, like, entertained the show and all that. And, you know, just... She was one of the companions. And then, whenever the Doctor regenerated into the 10th Doctor, 
she still stayed with him. It wasn't until the 10th Doctor became the 11th Doctor that he moved on. No, no. After Rose, the 10th Doctor got Martha. Martha Jones. And she was a doctor, and he was a patient in the thing. And then they, the moon, the, um, the Judoon t- um, transported a hospital to the moon. <coughs> and, oh, God. And, yeah, so that's how they met and stuff. So then he, then he had Donna. No. Which was prob- his oldest companion, probably. And she was getting married on the day that she got transported into the TARDIS. It was an accident. And she's super sassy. And originally she didn't want to travel with the doctor. Which is crazy. And then she was like, eh, you know, maybe. Maybe this will be alright. And then, so, she did, and they traveled. And then, she, and then the doctor regenerated into the 11th doctor. And he found Clara. So, Clara is just an, it was another companion. Except Clara, there's an interesting story behind Clara. Clara Oswald. Clara Oswald. With Clara, what the book? Was, um, the companion's companion is, uh, is like in the. Uh, it's not written by her, perspective. but res- per- by in the perspective of Clara. Yeah. So, never. It doesn't actually say who's written by. Or BBC. BBC. So what they did in the book? It, oh, okay. What Clara was, she was going. She went through time, and she always met the doctor. But she never knew it. So, like, once she was in an old bar. Not in a bar, but, like, in a, it was a really old time. Yeah, kind of like an old pub. And then she met the doctor. And then she was inside a Dalek once. And they met. And there was just a bunch of different times they met. Until finally she became Clara. And became the doctor's companion. And, yeah. So then... The doctor regenerated into the 12th doctor, and he still had Clara for a season. And Clara... Oh, wait, I forgot. I skipped Amy. Okay, so before Clara, and after... Okay, before Clara and after Donna, there was Amy Pond. Amy Pond is really interesting story. Uh, when um, his TARDIS crashed, went back in time, it was... He met Amy as a child... She waited for him for a bunch of years, then he came back, and then she traveled with him, but she was also engaged to Rory. It was, it's really weird. And, okay, so then there was Clara, and then after Clara, and then the 11th Doctor regenerated into the 12th Doctor, and Clara did not understand what happened. It was like, this isn't the Doctor, this is a completely different person. Which, like, honestly, I would probably feel the same if I didn't know anything about Time Lords. And, because whenever they regenerate, they normally, they'll have a completely different look and a completely different personality. Which, you know, that's crazy by itself. And so she was really confused and all that and stuff. So... But, what, like, to prove it to her, did he, like, show her the TARDIS or something? Well, no, it, it took a little while for, like, her to get used to it and stuff, but eventually she got used to it and stuff. <coughs> then the doc then the doctor met Bill Potts, which is probably my least favorite companion. Why? Just because she was only in one season, which I mean so was Martha and Donna. But she really didn't add that much to the story. Like the the season where the twelfth doctor had Bill, I just that was kind of not boring, but less Exciting, yes, yeah, less climatic season. No, Bill. You're getting really into this. You're standing up and everything. No, it's just because that's like hurting me and stuff. <laughs> All expressive to Yeah. Me. So, what it is is like Bill Potts is just another companion. And, you know, they. He goes, he. Um, the doctor goes, he's out of college. She goes to the college. They meet each other. They traveled together for a season. Bam. Now, I haven't watched any episodes of the 13th Doctor yet. Because I don't catch BBC. Because <laughs> we're not in Britain. Well, no, and I mean, we could still catch it. My parents just aren't paying for BBC. 
I wanted them to, but they're not. But, okay. <laughs> so they're not paying for it, so I have to wait till the 13th Doctor's episodes go on to Amazon Prime Video, and then I can watch it, and then I'm super excited for that and stuff, so, you know, that's going to be exciting. And, yeah. So, that was our episode of this podcast. It's over. Unless you want to... <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't add anything. Yeah, you it's like you you hate Bill, or you don't you don't hate her. But you, like you said, Bill doesn't add anything. I didn't add anything. Yeah. To this. Kind of like Bill. Yeah. Whoa. Do you, is there anything you wanna? I just like to add. Um, you can pick up these books, Doctor Who: The Companion's Companion. Probably on Amazon. Yeah, on Amazon you can pick them up at probably a local bookstore near you. Mm-hmm. That sell like maybe a um. A Books a Million or a Barnes and Nobles. Yeah. Or maybe even a library. I doubt a library would have these, but maybe. Yeah, I got, um, both of them were from Scholastic. So if you'd like to, like, pick up the books and, like, read about what we were talking about in the video or what he was talking about. They have Doctor Who, The Companion's Companion, and then they have Doctor Who, The Dangerous Book of Monsters, The Doctor's Official Guide. Both by BBC. Yeah. BBC makes a lot of good shows. Mm Mm-hmm. So, and they're British, so yeah, you know. British people. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if this happens to be the first episode of my podcast that you listen to, or just the first video that you've seen on my channel, which I mean, it could be the first episode of my podcast because it's only episode two. So yeah, so this happens to be the first anything you've seen by me, the first Sinjin, content, first content you've seen by me, Sinjin, then please remember to leave a like and subscribe. And stay tuned for more episodes of my podcast. And if you want, go check out my main channel where I put a bunch of funny videos, gameplays, other stuff, like little s- scripted stuff and stuff, stop motions. We recently did a really cool video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go check it out. I have a card trick video. I have some live streams. The live stream really. and stuff like that. Yeah, so remember... In my randomizers, remember, keep on keeping random.